Sculpturn offers a pretty simple user interface. We have this menu here and you can use it to create a new scene, to load or save one. Also you have access to materials. You can import and export uh, items and formats. There is the setup tab. You can add a null from here, a deform stack, and then we have uh, some deform effects here. You can add like the vertex cache, sculpt layer, transform, band, taper, twist, and so on. You also have this tab. Uh, you can use it to add a volume item. And also we have the last tab with textures, noise generator, checkerboard, and image map. Now we have the animation editor, the scene statistics panel, the outliner which shows all the items in the scene, and then the attribute uh, editor which shows the attributes of the currently selected item. We have the toolbox and you can use it to go in selection, transform or sculpt mode. And we have the animation playback control which is used to manage the, the timeline playback. Then we have three menus here. From the file menu you can manage uh, load and save uh, project files or import export of several formats like uh, OBJ, uh, MDD and uh, VDB. Uh, then we have the edit menu and the starter objects menu you can use to add some high poly um, primitive to your scene. To start sculpting you just have to select one of those primitives or, or load uh, an object in OBJ format and then select the object and click on sculpt here or press S on the keyboard. Then you will be able to start sculpting. You have several kind of brushes here you can use. We have the clay, we have like the twist, the drag or you know the, the push pull the standard push pull brush if you press control it will push control is going to invert the function the main function of the brush basically you can use smudge and even if this object is pretty heavy you can see how fast is it to sculpt it. If we want to animate the sculpt, which basically sculpture is all about, you have to select the sculpt layer and then activate this curve here in the morph attribute. This will bring the attribute into the animation editor and since we have auto key on, we can just sculpt and a keyframe will be automatically created. You can also create a keyframe just pressing control and the left mouse button or opening the menu on the right mouse button and use create key. There is also this option here in the timeline create key that does the same thing. Another way to create keyframes uh, is to go directly on the attribute press the right mouse button and just create keyframe. So let's delete all those keyframes. Delete keys, go to frame zero, and I'm going to reset this uh, morph shape. Reset, and now we're back to our initial shape. Let's move to frame 50. Let's activate symmetry on the X and let's use the grab to just, you know, create some variations. So now the changes I made are animated. We can also move the the frame around. If you press the bar it will start playing the animation. You can probably limit this to like 50 frames. Well, let's do 75 or 100. I just want to recover my my keyframe, but to do that I can also use this bar here 
So you see you can move your keyframe even while the animation is playing. So let's stop it and let's create some other another keyframe, you know, on at frame 60. And now we have another keyframe added to the animation. When we start sculpting an object for the first time, a deform stack item is added to the scene and parented to the uh, object, and a sculpt layer is created and parented to the deform stack. In the sculpt layer, we can find all the morph information of the current object. So each time we have an object selected and use the sculpt button here, if there is a sculpt layer already present uh, in the object, it will be activated. If there is known, a new one will be created. So if I get sculpt now, the sculpt layer it's automatically selected, the sculpt toolbox appears, and I can start sculpting. We can add as many sculpt layers uh, as we need. So this is uh, a new sculpt layer, and the other one is still active, of course. We can create like a keyframe, so let's activate the curve here. Let's create a keyframe, which is an empty keyframe for the second scope layer. And we can like use, for example, the inflate brush. Okay, let's activate the symmetry and sculpt a new keyframe. So using a second scope layer, we have created some nice overlapping action for this animation. We can also use a, a procedural texture as an alpha for our brush. To do that, we just have to add a noise generator. And here you can change uh, several attributes. Uh, let's use a cellular and yeah let's try this one um, so to use it you select your object activate the sculpt or maybe in this case why not we can create an, a new sculpt layer and I'm also going to create uh, a keyframe so let's activate the curve keyframe here and I want to sculpt like this keyframe um, so, let's select, we already have the scope layer selected, all we have to do is to, again, activate uh, the sculpt tool and turn on textured here and drag the noise generator we just created into the textures. It is slot. possible to use a procedural texture as an alpha for our brushes. And that's what the noise generator is for. So, let's add a noise generator. We have several options we can use here, and I'm going to change the noise type to cellular, maybe changing also the, the max value. And why not, we can also apply a distortion to our procedural texture. So now we can select our object, go in sculpt mode and enable symmetry and also textured and then drag the noise generator into the texture slot. So now so now all the sculpt brushes will use the texture in the generator as alpha. We can also invert the texture or press control to use the grab along the normals. We can also apply some pretty powerful deformers to our object. So I'm going to select the object again and add a twist deformer. We can use feet to bounding box to adapt the deformer size to the object dimensions. The deformer will be added to the stack of the current object. Also, a reference null will be added. We can use it to animate the effect transformations. 
Let's select the deformer and change the twist angle. We can then select the twist reference and use the transform tool to move it around and rotate it. Deformers can of course be animated and combined with sculpt layers, other deformers and caches. The ability to edit caches is definitely one of the most important features in Sculpture. OBJ and MDD format can be used. Edits can be saved as MDD or OBJ sequences. The deform stack is fast and powerful and fully supports order of operations. In this case I'm using a Spherify effect and a twist to deform the MDD cache of this model. The Spherify effect is applied before the MDD, while the twist happens after that. Everything happens in real time and considering the number of polygons in the scene that's quite amazing. Sculptron also offers volume sculpting. Any deformed mesh can be converted to a volume. A single frame or a whole animation can be saved in VDB format. Let's see how it works. In this scene we have one mesh, the steroid, and two generators there we're going to use with a volume. All we need to do is to add a volume item and parent the toroid to the volume. Let's hide the toroid so we can only see the volume. We can now select the volume and displace the volume itself using one of the two noise generators, in this case I'm going to use this one, probably named as the EF, and that's what we're getting. The SDF amplitude is probably a little too high, so let's set it to something like 50%. And now let's also add the other generator, this time to the volume texture. That's what we're getting now. Now let's select the toroid and let's start sculpting it. I'm going to use the, the grab and you can see that the volume conversion works in real time. We can now change the volume resolution which right now is pretty low. Let's try something like 40 or why not 60. Higher resolution requires a little time to be calculated, so the best thing is to play with that at the end of the process. We have several options to play with, like the density or the lighting direction or the light intensity. Once we're happy with the result, we can select the volume and export a single VDB or a VDB sequence. Thanks for watching.